Hello, today I am talking a quick introduction to my trading card game, uh, Immortals, the trading card game. That is the working title, at least for the time being. I'm going to do this in uh, introduction by doing a sort of test hunt. So the way to set up this game is simple. First of all, you need five legendary cards, which are essentially powerful spell cards that are going to represent your life. You're going to choose which order you think will be best for them to appear during the game. And place them in that order face down to the side of the game. The only other thing you need to set the game up is your 40 card deck. And then to choose one creature within your 40, 40 card deck with 2500 or less power. And with no restrictions on the summoning to begin the game in the centre of your field. This central creature is your immortal. And as you go through the game you will place stronger creatures on top of it to power up your immortal. Some creatures cannot be an immortal. If um, Well, actually, yeah, let's get into that. Right, okay. So, first of all, let's look at this creature we have. We've got the, the name of the card at the top. It's habitat, it's type, it's subtype, if it has one, and it's keyword ability. Now, all creatures have at least one keyword ability. In this instance, it's charge in. Some creatures have supporter, which means you can't play them as your immortal, and some creatures have immortal, which means you can't play them as a supporter. This creature also has generic 5, which means you can have 5 copies of it in your deck. Any creature that doesn't have this term on its card, you can only have 1 copy of. It then has its effect, and finally it has its strength at the bottom. So we're going to begin the game with Dunkle Krieger. That's all we need, then we need to shuffle our now 39 card deck, and draw our hand. So we're going to draw 5 cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then at the start of our turn, we're going to draw another card. During our turn, we can play one creature, that is called the Recruitment, and we can also play any number of other cards that we wish to, uh, as long as we have the cards to play. In this instance, we are looking for a creature that has a high strength than our own, so that we can strengthen our Immortal. Because we don't have any, it makes sense to play a creature that is the same strength instead. <clears throat> Now, if my opponent then plays a creature, now, now, once this has happened, um, your opponent can play a creature up to the total strength of all the creatures you control. So now your opponent is allowed to play a 5k a strength creature, which isn't going to happen. It's very unlikely that's going to happen turn one, but you never know. Uh, in this instance, it say they were to have such a creature, let's say it has 4,500 power. In this instance, we could combine our, our creatures together or team them, do an attack which combines their strength and hits the creature that has lower strength. They are then unteamed and placed back in the places they originally came from. To attack with a creature, you simply turn it sideways, as I just did, and declare the target. If the strength is higher, you hit... And if, the, if their strength is higher, they hit you. If n both are equal, nothing happens. If you hit a supporter, that creature is discarded immediately. If you hit an immortal, they are afflicted, which means they take one damage to the legendary. Now, taking damage. If all of your legendaries are face down, you turn the closest one face up. Some legendaries have an effect when flipped, which is what this means. So this would activate now. Some legendaries have effect while they face up, and some have effect that let you discard them during your turn for a powerful effect. If the next legendary is face up, you simply discard it. You do not get any discard effects for that. That only if discard effect on legendaries only activate if you discard them out of choice. Let's skip to a creature. Let's get that out of the way. Let's skip to a creature that can power up our immortal. Um for example, the main creature in this deck, Dunkle Kaiser. Oops, I've knocked the camera. My sincerest apologies. I never really intended this video to be good. It's mostly just so the guy I'm playtesting this with can have an idea what we're doing before uh, we start playing. I'll do a better video than this in the future. Uh, okay, so say we drew this during our next turn. This is what we want as our Immortal, but we need 3,000 Offering to play this creature. So let's say this Supporter wasn't discarded. 
The uh, the creature says on the card offering three thousand, which means we have to offer up or discard that met much power in our creatures to play it. It also has a second effect, which we'll get into in a second. However, if you're recruiting the creature as an immortal, you can treat the power of the creature below it as part of the offering. So now we only have to discard five hundred strength, which means this twenty five hundred strength creature is perfectly fine to pay for the cost. For his particular cost, we also have to put a Dunkle creature back on the top of our deck, and then the creature is out. We can then attach gear cards to it, or play conditions on it, or anything we wish to. Now, if a creature comes into play that is that has an offering but isn't going to be immortal, you obviously can't do that. You have to just discard the creatures that can build up the offering. Um... One more thing we have is evolution creatures, which go in the spare deck, which can be played on top of any creature who meets the conditions. So in this instance, our evolution creature can evolve from one Dunkler creature with 3000 plus strength, which is perfectly fine. However, since we've just played this, we can't do it this turn, so let's skip ahead a turn and play it now. This card essentially goes on top of that card. Any When a card is placed on top of another card, any cards attached to it are discarded. And then we can use this creature instead. You can evolve supporters instead. Um, if you so desire. Now you have four supporter zones. Two on either side. Of the immortal. These supporters are going to allow you to both protect your immortal. But also damage your opponent. Some creatures have intercept abilities, although I literally do not know if there is any in this entire deck, to be honest. I'll have a quick look. Okay, well, some creatures, their keyword ability here is intercept, which means when a friendly creature is attacked, you can have them take the attack instead. Then the intercept ability is used for that turn. And if the creature has been defeated by the attack, they are discarded, of course. One more thing to consider in the game is uh, effect damage. Um, if I can find an example of that. So this, when this creature comes into play, it deals 2500 total damage to opposing creatures. Effect damage essentially just reduces the strength of a creature... This can cripple it and mean it's a lot easier to hit. You can also reduce creatures' strength with card effects. This is slightly different. It's not treated as the same thing. It's different game terminology, but it is essentially the same thing. Other card types we have include gear cards, which are often used to strengthen our creatures. Condition cards, which represent something that just sort of happens during the game. So this is a very interesting card. When your opponent activates an effect, declare a number, your opponent may then draw that many cards, and if they do, nullify that effect. So you kind of have to guess how many cards you're going to have to let your opponent draw to negate an effect. Um, we have some condition cards that are negative for your opponent instead. So like, for example, Fleeting Existence. Makes one of your cre opponent's creatures weaker. And then eventually discards it. And there are also spell cards. But they are very few. Oh here's one. They are very few and far between in this game as it currently stands. Spell cards in this game have to be cast by your creatures. And usually a one use card. But some of them can attach to creatures. And that is basically everything apart from the immortal, uh, the legendaries. Which we haven't really spoken about yet. So let's sp speak about them now. Let's take a look at the legendaries. So, uh, this legendary has, when this card is flipped, which means when you take damage and it's turned face up, add a Dark Dominion character from your deck to your hand. Simple enough. Then it has an effect that is active while it is face up. This card has, remove this card from your legendaries and play it as a condition. That means it's an effect you can only use during your turn, and that is therefore different. Some effects discard themselves to activate that effect. That does not mean they occur when the card itself is discarded due to being afflicted. If you are afflicted and it is your last face-up legendary and it is discarded, you lose the game. It is basically that simple. I don't even know what else I can really say. 
Well, thank you for watching and goodbye.